A while ago I published a short with the title, Top 10 of the Strongest Hypothetical Darksiders Characters. As the name suggests, it was about the 10 strongest Darksiders characters from whom we have received little to no feat so far. This list included characters like Lilith, who was given abilities by death in the Darksiders novel that not even war would have been able to withstand, as well as the Horsemaster and the one this video is about, PWOS Death. But what does PWOS Death mean? PWOS Death is an acronym that I came up with myself and means, Host Well of Souls Death. As you can already understand, this is a term used to classify strength at a certain point in time. In my opinion, Post Well of Souls Death is the most powerful version of death we could ever get if it were ever implemented in one of these forms. There are actually different versions of death in this hypothetical thought experiment that I came up with in my incredible boredom. But they are all connected to one scene from Darksiders 2, the scene in which Death had his first known meeting with the King of the Dead where the following was discussed. What would you have of me, horseman? Show me the way to the Well of Souls. <laughs> and what do you seek there? Power over life and death? Or do you hope for absolution, Kinslayer? I wondered where the souls of your brethren had gone, for they never passed through my realm. But let's get started now. Let's see what exactly post Well of Souls death might look like. Version 1. Death became a part of the Well of Souls, and thus literally became the concept of death. To this day, it is not fully known what happened to death after he jumped into the Well of Souls. Some say he died, some say he didn't. But what we know for certain is that he sacrificed the souls of the Nephilim to resurrect humanity. This version of death would require that death loses his physical body and merges with the well of souls and becomes a part of it. If death would be a part of the well, it is also possible that he would be a part of the concept of death and not just its executioner. Whether or not death would have consciousness in the traditional sense is quite controversial. However, it cannot be denied that he would be a lot stronger in terms of power than before since he would be able to simply kill anything and anyone, as long as they are not already dead. Version 2. Death became the new guardian watcher of the Well of Souls. This version of PWOS Death needs a few conditions that must be met so that it ultimately works in the end. Condition number one is, the Well of Souls has a consciousness just like the corruption. Condition number two, Azrael's role as the Watcher of the Well of Souls was never given to him, he took it for himself, or the Well of Souls chooses its Watchers. These two conditions must be active so that this version makes sense. I personally think that this is not far-fetched to be fair. Corruption was able to choose Absalom as its champion to corrupt the Well of Souls. As I already discussed in my video about Absalom, check that one out if you didn't already, his role was to protect the Well of Souls from being saved. If the Well of Souls had a consciousness, it would be a beautiful reference to Absalom's and Death's relationship. One was chosen to bring destruction and death to creation, the other one to bring balance and life. It is quite ironic to think that the one who is named Literal Death protects life from himself and preserves it. Version 3 Death absorbs a part from the Well of Souls and can partially control life. This version of post Well of Souls death is, at least in my opinion, the one that could most likely be true, as this post Well of Souls death would not need to deal with the problem of plot holes. All the other versions had one problem to them, this problem being Darksiders 1's ending sequence where War dropped his famous, not alone line, to bring the other horsemen back to Earth, but back to death. In Darksiders 1, when War met Azrael, Azrael mentioned that the Destroyer is gaining his power by draining the Well of Souls. What if Death does the same by using the souls of the Nephilim? To sacrifice the souls of the Nephilim, some sort of pact between Death and the Well should have been made. It is quite possible for Death to find some sort of opening to absorb a part of the Well and to get stronger in the end. How this would affect his form with the Seven Seals, I cannot tell. If Death's base form is a lot stronger, it could mean that his seven seals form would be amplified as well. But what I am certain about is that death would absolutely be able to drain his enemy's life force in some sort of way. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Death could fight the likes of Samael or Lucifer and win with moderate difficulty. Now that we've come to the end, I would like to say a few words about this channel and for you all. Everything that I will cover and discuss in this and upcoming videos will mainly consist of theories that I create or interpret from the knowledge that we currently have about Darksiders. Of course, that doesn't mean that I won't cover topics that we do know about. At the moment, I'm working on a video in which I'm trying to cover all the races, tribes, and species from Darksiders, but there will still be mostly theories on this channel. If THQ doesn't delight us with some kind of Darksiders news at the digital showcase in August, there's little hope left that we'll ever get a new novel or game. However, I don't want to rush into judgment and give up on everything. There have always been many years between the Darksiders games and I hope that they at least stay consistent with that. With that said, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.